And I can't believe uh, Shadow, uh, Shadow Band Scouting's film review. He didn't say anything bad. He didn't, didn't do anything wrong in that video. Straight up, just taken down for no well, reason. Yeah, that's because the powers that be have taken over this uh, YouTube thing. I, I mean, you have like Mile High Huddle all of a sudden gets these uh, uh, 10K view. But Rich Eisen doesn't even get that much. All of a sudden, out of the blue, I mean, we were all getting about the same views, and all of a sudden, after the the, the ownership group took it over, the the whole YouTube, uh, 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 what you call it, the the backbone of the YouTube is con completely different for these guys. Yep. These pop up channels that read scripts, they're uh, uh, getting all these views, and you're like scratching your head, what? You know? Yeah. No. No. Well, we do know that you know this is a bot world, and. Those that can afford the bots pay the bots, you know, <clears throat> get the get the subs and the, everything else under the sun. <clears throat> Bought and paid for, excuse me. So what we have here today, ladies and gentlemen, is the Mile High uh, Masterminds. We have the Bubble Man, we got Bucket Man, and we got Chop Liver here. Uh, you know, finally together, this should, uh, it's every, you know, these detractors, their heads, you know, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, explode. So you know we're trying to make sense of this uh, latest splash move by the Denver Broncos, um, bribing. Let's just call a spade what it is, bribing uh, because nobody else would pay it. Uh, you know as much that the Broncos paid to bring in Sean Payton and what that is going to mean down the road. So, <clears throat> Bubble Man, I'm going to let you. Pick up where we were talking. You know, you can you can start this, kick it all off. Yeah, well, Sean Payton. Um, Excuse me. I mean, look at <clears throat> if you look at Sean Payton's last like three quarterbacks in recent memory, you have Trevor Simeon, Bridgewater, and Breeze, and then now he's switching to Russell Wilson. Uh, I mean, because there's clearly very huge similarities between Russell Wilson and Teddy Bridgewater. You know, you <laughs> saw last year Russell Wilson getting rid of the ball very quickly, you know, hitting his check downs when they're open, um, being able to combat the horrible offensive line. Sorry, I got a cat in here. Oh, no, another cat, no. <laughs> oh, man, they might call, uh, they might call the, the pet people on me because I'm giving the wrong opinion on the Broncos. But yeah, uh, so yeah. Russell Wilson is very similar to Teddy Bridgewater all last year, getting rid of the ball very quick, bad offensive line, always taking his check downs, uh, wide open check downs. He's always quick to take what the defense gives him, just like Simeon and uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Not really, because yeah, Russell that's sarcasm. That's called yeah, sarcasm. Exactly. Yeah, because that's exactly what you're going to get next year. Russell Wilson's going to turn from a one read play action quarterback who thrives when the run game is dominating which Pete Carroll runs the ball more than he throws the ball then he builds off the play action which is why he was so successful because if you're a one read quarterback and you have a dominant run game they think you're running the ball and they leave someone wide open and that's exactly what he thrived off of in Seattle and that's exactly what the Broncos didn't do under Nathaniel Hackett and they're not going to do under Sean Payton uh, the running backs that they have in Denver now don't even fit what uh, Sean Payton wants to do in the first place. Javante Williams isn't going to be catching anything out of the backfield. He's not going to be running any routes. No one's scared of Javante Williams running any routes and catching passes. Uh, Latavius Murray, him either. Uh, Marlon Mack is probably the best option you'd have there. But, I mean, you had four running backs that fit a system, and then now you bring in Sean Payton change the whole system again, make these players learn a brand new system again. And that's why nobody wants to be there is because there's no, there's no stick to witness. There's no routine next year. They're like, all right, what's our new offense going to be? What's our new defense going to be next year? Because they already know they're not going to have the same coaching staff every year. And with Sean Payton, I don't think you're going to see Russell Wilson and Sean Payton getting the blame. You're going to hear, we need a new offensive coordinator. We need a new defensive coordinator. If we just get a defensive coordinator, we're going to be back in the next year. Because when they're sitting at a 3-7 and seven next year by week 10, they're going to have all the excuses ready to go. And they're going to say, oh, it's the offensive coordinator's fault. Oh, it's the... It's the defensive coordinator's fault, and that's that's going to be the next thing. We'll just be an offensive and defensive coordinator away. No accountability for the front office. Same results and fans being like, do you have anything positive to say about the team? 
why would I say something positive when this team has been losing for like six years straight? And refuses to actually <laughs> the way we see all the teams that where they are right now, the two Super Bowl teams. Do you think that they ran out with their hair on fire and got uh, uh, Mahomes? Uh, no. Didn't they first, let me just correct me if I'm wrong, didn't they, uh, the ownership and the GM go and get Andy Reid? <clears throat> Andy Reid comes and it's like, we're going to set a certain uh, style of football. We're going to be a certain personality, offensive and defensive. And didn't the front office people in the scouting department say, okay, we'll get you, we'll scout your defense and we'll scout your offensive players that, that stick to your system. Isn't that how they did? And then they started developing, you know, as they went, getting uh, uh, Alex Smith, then finally building the team around that and then moving on. Am, am I not correct about all that? That's exactly. Isn't that, isn't that the opposite of what we see? The philosophy of the trust is at, at Denver. Now it seems like the oh, new ownership is taking that, you know, splashy move identity. Don't blame us. We didn't do anything wrong. It's the quarterback's fault. It's the coaches. It's everybody's fault, but our fault. It, it, did we just, did the ownership just take ownership of that philosophy? Yep, they did. And they were just as good, in my opinion, under Alex Smith as they didn't skip a beat. They got a little better with that mobility. But even with Alex Smith, they were always a threat to Peyton Manning and the Broncos. They were always right there. Uh, it was always coming down to the end of the year. The Broncos uh, got, they were a Jamal Charles fumble away from losing the division. So um, the Chiefs have always been right there ever since they got Andy Reid, Mahomes or no Mahomes. And yep. that's what a great coach is. That's what commitment gets you. That's what committing to your young quarterback. And when they got smacked around by the Buccaneers in the Super Bowl, what did they go and do in that offseason? They went, fix the offensive line. Well, obvious. It. it was obvious. Yep. 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 And they're back here now. And uh, maybe we'll see the, what the uh, the Bengals want to do. I imagine that they're going to let T. Higgins walk and build their offensive line because that's what's costed them both Super Bowls last year and this year. And uh, that's what I would hope to see. We'll see what kind of organization the Bengals are. But that's obvious. That's the obvious answer. You don't pay the receiver. You pay the offensive line, which is the engine that makes the offense move. And if you don't have an offensive line, you don't have an offense. Broncos haven't had an offensive line since the end of 2014. Nor, nor do they, they want. Nor do they want one. Nor do they, Nor have they wanted one. I mean, the only thing they've done, like Garrett Bowles, he's horrible. He sucks. You know. And I was watching. Uh, what was his name? Colin Coward. He was saying, "Yeah, this is a great choice for Sean Payton. They have a great left tackle. They have great defense. Great running backs. Great receivers. I'm like a great left tackle. I was like, I honestly like the way the offensive line performed better without Bowles than with Bowles." Because yeah, there wasn't any holding say, penalties. I got something to say about Bowles just really quick. Even our opinions about him off to the side, the extent of his injury, I think, you know, if they put him back out there too early, I think that you can't even make an excuse for he, for his bad. I think it's just going to, he's going to re-injure that. He's going to be out. I think he's going to be another hot tub time machine if they bring him back too early. Because I think the extent of that injury, I think right now, one year is just getting yourself so you can work out. And then you need another year of working out and, 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 and trying to get yourself back in the foot. I, that looked almost like, a, to me, a two-year type of an injury. Footwork, you know. And he's not even good wait around for him to come back in two years. Not even close. I mean, exactly. this guy this guy got, an, I mean, I believe they extended him too. And I'm like, well, all these players that you spend all this money on, what have you gotten out of it? You could, you could show me the stats that say you can make stats out of anything in the NFL, out of anything to yeah. spin the team and yeah. looking back it really is. But at the end of the day, the only stat that matters is wins and losses, and the Broncos have not been winning games for the last six years in a row since 2016. But they're and just a coach away. They're, they're, they were just that away. They were just this away and the other thing away. Uh, yeah. Just back away and got the quarterback. What happened? That, that's the shame in my opinion. That, that's the shame in all of this, in my opinion. I think that had, um, I don't know, Pat Bowen or whatever, got rid of that trust stench, and we had the Bridgewater. Uh, maybe Fangio says, "Look, you don't have to play John Elway's game of 
you know, pretending you're the head coach, you can actually be a defensive coordinator. We're going to bring Sean Payton in. We got all this draft capital. We've got Bridgewater who fits, you know, what they, they, they've worked with each other and we can go out and get, we can really start shaping this the way. And we have people that can, you know, on the front office that can go out and scout and get what Sean Payton needs. That's the, that's the crime here. In my opinion, you don't have that. You, you put, as always, the cart in front of the, the Bronco horse, you know, every single time. And to me, and I said this in the last video I did with the bucket man, is that it seems Sean, they painted themselves in a corner and Sean Payton has this sand, oh, this sandbox and he can't go out of that sandbox and, and really get this, the player personnel he needs to really take this team to the next level. Yep, exactly. And he's... Even, I mean, even if he even outlasts this Russell Wilson contract, which is going to restrict them from signing free agents, um, he's he's on a five-year deal, and so is Russell Wilson. So by the time Russell Wilson's out, and they don't have this contract, so is Sean Payton. So they're going to be starting over anyway. So if your so if your solution to the problem was to bring in a coach who doesn't fit Russell Wilson. Um, Russ Wilson style at all. He doesn't run the ball 52% of the time in every game. He doesn't thrive off the play action. He wants a quarterback who can read the field before he snaps the ball, read the field quickly while he's just dropping back three times, three to five steps. And that's not what Russ Wilson does. That's not his game. And he's going to have to change his whole coaching identity to fit one player. I mean, it's obvious he just took it for the money. I mean, if he wasn't getting paid this, he we wouldn't be even having this conversation right now. It took a twenty million dollar a year bribe for five years. Well, you should feel you should feel vindicated. You were getting into it with that uh, Bronco insider. Oh, oh, they're not bribed. They're, this money isn't being talked about. Oh no, no, you're crazy. It's one of those conspiracy theories. So what comes out? He's going to be the high paid coach in the yeah. NFL. Yeah, so Sean, never their guy. And it was 100 accurate. He was never their guy. Dan Quinn was never their guy. Um, and then when D'Amico Ryan straight up said, "You know, it was easy not to pick the Broncos." Oh, D'Amico Ryan's is never their guy. Or, and then when John, they, were, Gett, they surely were going to offer him that kind of money. It mm -hmm. was either Harbaugh or it was Sean Payton with that kind of money. But Sean I, Payton. They went after not. What, three times they went after him three times like it's like he already said no twice like at some point it's harassment exactly I, I, I say that exactly and i i knew that that uh it had been the saints holding it up and they they were smart to do like what seattle did dig their heels and said no you're the one that's desperate we're not desperate you're the one desperate your hair is on fire like always if you really want this guy this is what you're going to give up for him period end of story and Sean Payton basically said exactly that when he was interviewed in Denver about the process. He said, well, you know, this is unusual because it, New Orleans definitely needed to get compensated. And I don't think that uh, there was ever a rift between the Saints and, and uh, Sean Payton. I think it was clear that, hey, we can't give you this kind of money. It was clear that if I keep in this rebuild process, I'm not going to have the record. All of a sudden, I'm going to have this bad record. And people will say, well, it was just because of Bree. So he gets out smartly. You know, give him credit. He got out and sat and said, well, I want to get paid. He said that as soon as he got out, I want to get paid. So that was always in his wheelhouse, wanting to get paid. And I just want to say one thing, too, about what you were saying about quarterbacks. We hear this, oh, Sean Payton, he changed it for, for Winston. He, he, he changed it for Bridgewater. He, he changed it for Simeon, right? Well, what, what you just said it yourself. What is the common thread between all of those quarterbacks? He, they are all the anti Wilson. They all are similar pocket quarterbacks. Okay. They're not the, uh, you know, I mean, when we did film study, we saw that Wilson actually, when he had it, is as much as they were complaining about the offensive line for the Seattle Seahawks, it was a step up of what he had in Denver. That's he was. He like was still think, able to get high, higher percent of passes in the pocket than when he tried to scramble. But he did, and even with that, he still didn't go through the reads. He was still pretty much a one read. And again, the Seattle fans were bemoaning. He does seem to want to go for the deep ball for the stats or whatever the motivation is. He seems to want to do that first and do the 
the latter, you know, the, the easier passes, the more smart, shorter passes, you know, after the fact. That's as obvious as uh, it can be that he's only in it for his own image. Um, front, he gets his own office at the headquarters, what that has to do with winning games. I don't know why your quarterback needs his own office. I don't know. Um, but the Broncos entertain that. Private parking spaces at the stadium, why you need that? I don't know. It just sets a bad stench to the rest of the teammates that this guy has favoritism over all of us. Well, I and think that's been, been, what we're Broncos, I think it's been in the Broncos' wheelhouse for a while. We had a, a player go on uh, What's-His-Face's show, the Cody Rourke, and uh, he was saying that that's been a problem. You got Justin Simmons, who you know isn't that good, getting these Walter Payton awards for being a great guy off the field, and he's a great personality in front of a microphone, and he gets preferential treatment, as you said, <laughs> over somebody like Stearns who can actually play the position. You know, that's been a... And, uh, you know, is is Peyton going to be able to break that culture? Is he going to get rid of, be able to get rid of, liquidate some of these players who have been pampered by the trust? That's up to, the ownership. That good. up to the ownership in the front office and <clears throat> them bringing in Sean Peyton, who doesn't fit anything the Broncos have player personnel wise, is just like what the trust did. So I expect them to do just like what the trust did. You're going to have to work with Justin Simmons. You're going to have to pay Draymond Jones and deal with it. You're going to pick the players we want to pick, not the players you want to pick, not the players who will help this team win. So that means, what, no first round next year. So in the second round next year, maybe, or in the third round next year, whenever their first pick is, oh, edge rusher again, just like last year, Nick Benito, absolutely terrible pick who contributed nothing. Um, the, when they finally had a first round pick, number ninth overall, they select Patrick Sertain. Good corner, but not what they needed. Not going to help you win. Not going to help you fix the actual issue. I was saying that they're like, nah, you need a, a great corner is the corner storm, the cornerstone of every great franchise. Well, okay, we'll see when we're not winning games next year, but we have a good corner, though. Like, that makes no sense. The That's a big is from the inside out. We see that with the two Super Bowl teams that are here. Uh, we've gone through the, the whole, it's not about Patrick Mahomes, it go, it's beyond that. We see it all the time, but this this ownership, this trust refuses to to do what everybody that's got it right. You know, they, it's quick fixes, edges, edges, corners, 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 receivers, receivers, receivers quarterback, quarterback, every, everything else is just has to be good enough. And, and for their obsession with receivers, their receivers suck. Their receivers exactly, are exactly they, 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 exa- they're so <clears throat> public as, you know, uh, the, the greatest show on turf, Tory Holt and. You know, super duper Clayton, all that, you know, they're not. Rod Smith, they're none of that. None of that. They're not even Metcalf. They're not Metcalf. I mean, I miss the days of Demarius Thomas, big physical fast receivers, Eric Deckers. I miss the uh, Emmanuel Sanders, the Eddie Royals, Brandon Lloyds, Brandon. The Broncos have always had solid receivers. And now they have Cortland Sutton, who sucks. Regress. Regress. Nothing. Contract. Regress. Yeah that entire season last year but then they still extend him uh tim patrick at best he's a he's a number two number three option um overpay him yeah and, uh, and that know. was before the new coach came to say wait a minute oh that's right as we predicted before even the thing said he was just a yes man he had no he was never like fangio he's never had any input on the offense the gm doesn't have put on the on anything so why would the but head on, that's obvious that's if yeah. nobody gets gets anything if they don't get that now they're they they've been sleeping they've been hiding under a rock and yeah. they're there's no gm yeah. the sean payton thing's gonna blow up in their face next year because sean payton took this job not to make a winning franchise but to make the money to retire off of a hundred million dollars to retire live his life I mean when they fire him he'll probably be rejoicing because he won't even have to go to work they'll still be paying him so I mean, you can't yeah, you say no to that, can you? I couldn't say no to that. I would. I, mean, I don't blame him. A hundred million dollars to show up, like that's all he has to oh, do. On the, on the surface, we don't even know what's under the table. Yep, what they're offering him as far as benefits, like I don't know. I don't know. So uh, until the, the ownership shows me otherwise that they're going to give him control and give him say, which I don't see because it was a trust move to hire him in the first place. They're going to do the trust move to not let him do anything that he would want to do in the first place anyway. Well, I would think that he would have to uh, uh, do things that that's not normal around here. 
uh, you know, to get this thing, this ship right. And he said himself, and he must have said it nine times. Oh, it was a lot of work. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of, you know, we got a long way to go. I mean, all this like saying over and over, this isn't going to be easy. He must have said that five times, you know, and he kept saying at least, details. At least he's at least he's saying the right thing, but it's a matter of time before they are like, hey, 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 don't be saying that on camera. Don't be saying stuff like that. You better be promising them Super Bowls, better be promising them playoff trips, better be. I mean, even Colin Coward, did he not learn last year when he said that the Broncos were going to be in the Super Bowl? That snake bit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's he's being slipped cash by the Broncos organization for sure, and I'm just sick of it. I'm sick of seeing the same thing from the media every year when we when we when we signed Keenum. All oh, the Broncos are going to replicate the success of the Minnesota Vikings, even though he's in a system that is not like Pat Shermer's system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody wants to talk about that. Yeah, nobody wants to talk about that. And you guys weren't around, but I mean, this I went through this with the Raiders. Just watching as a Bronco fan. You know, it was the same thing. It was the media overhyping the Raiders. Oh my God, they're they're they, they, this is it. They got that piece. They're going to be they're the going to be the favorites now. They're going to be they're going to be doing this. They're going to and they 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 just like the Broncos. They didn't do jack shit. And it just got to the point where enough you couldn't pay the media enough to look like a bunch of dumbasses anymore. They just threw their hands up and said, "Yeah, the Raiders are the Raiders." You know, and it, that's the road we're heading down. I was just like, "Is this going to be another coach that the Broncos kill?" You know, they're already stuck, a, you know, and not that Russell Wilson didn't have a hand in it, but they, you know, stuck a dagger right in Russell Wilson's chest. He's like on life support. So Nathaniel know. reputation is completely ruined because of what happened in Denver. I mean, when he, when Nathaniel Hackett got here, this is before the trade of Russell Wilson. I'm sure had the trade happened before the head coach was hired, I'm sure he would have said no. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, before the trade, before the or before that, yeah, that this was. Oh, he probably got promised Aaron Rodgers. Well, you know, if we get you, we'll 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 definitely have Aaron Rodgers. He'll he'll come. You he, well, Aaron Rodgers wasn't stupid. Aaron There's, Rodgers said no like many times during the season during during that little hype session of we're gonna get Aaron Rodgers by March. He was already saying no publicly, and the Broncos media is like, no, 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 we're still gonna get him. I mean, even when these the people themselves come out and say, no, I'm not going to Denver, Denver media is still like, oh, they're still coming here, like as if it didn't happen. Well, I'll be honest with you. I don't think that um, uh, Russell Wilson actually thought that the Seattle would actually trade him. I, I think I was talking, like I said, with the Saints insider, we were talking about this. He's, he's like a deer in the head, like, oh, shit, they did it. You know, like, yeah, because this this organization is desperate. We're going to fleece him. And you're you that who wants to go and you're putting it out there that you you're not happy. You got what you want. Now you go and you can you can you, you don't have to worry. And they pay. OK, that part of the deal. Russell's we're going to pay you. And guess what? Seattle's going to fleece you on top of it. So you see how that worked out. Yep. Now, that's the, the thing. That's the sandbox, along with the crap player personnel that Sean Payton is stuck uh, working with. Yep, and no no ways to fix it because they gave their ability to fix it away to get those two people. So, um, Well, even if they did have it, I'm just wondering if there's anybody in the front office that has a clue, scout. Well, that's what, you know, that's how, that's where I really want to see the rubber meet the road with Sean Payton. Are you going to get all that, that trust stench out of their scouting, Elway the consultant, all that nonsense, and, and, and get people like Ireland, like Loomis, you know, and again, I mean, they those guys put a leash on on Sean Payton and say, look, we got to build this this. We got to get from the inside out before we can. You can't. You got to stop with all the toys. Got themselves in trouble with salary cap and stuff like this. They're already and he's going to place where they're already in trouble with the salary cap. So I think he would have been better off had New Orleans been able to pay him or was willing to pay him. I think he would have been fine. He got paid and he could start working. And that's all fine, but. The Dolphins weren't going to give him that much, you know, for you, nobody was going to pay Sean Payton, but the Denver Broncos as much as he was going to get. They were out trying to outpace everybody in the in the will we'll, in the bribe. You know, they, that's why I call it a bribe, because nobody was going to, you know, give everything that the Broncos gave for that that Sean Payton pick. Yep. And he doesn't even fit the system that they need to run the. Uh benefit russell wilson it makes it never made any sense now again like i said what pisses me off 
isn't so much that they got paid Peyton in that it's not just that it's that they got him at this point in time instead of what it would have made much more sense is, is back in time when we had Bridgewater and all the draft capital and, and everything else that would have made a whole hell of a lot more sense but they wanted Aaron <laughs> Rodgers so I mean that's uh, why you'd, why you'd even want Aaron Rodgers the price you'd have had to pay and the time he has left on his career I, I don't know. I well, don't it's know. called desperation. It's called desperation. They want to re- they want to repeat what happened to Peyton Manning, but you don't have the roster in place. Well, again, again, let's let's go take a go take a trip down. People just don't like history. And let's take a look at where the Broncos were, and how, where the, the steps they took to the time they got Peyton Manning. There was a building process going on. It started with Josh McDaniels, who at least. With Pat Bowen, they at least said, look, we got to get these lines. This is, we got to, and they picked all those linemen stuff, you know, and then we, we worked out from there. We built out. And then we go get, get Sean Payton, the defensive players. Uh, we have uh, Russ, uh, we have, I'm sorry, Wade Phillips being brought in over, you know, Elway getting uh, uh, trumped by uh, Pat Bowen. Said no, no, no. You're not going to go get uh, Vance Joseph. You got to go with Wade Phillips. So these pieces came together. It wasn't just Peyton Manning, and that's what people people just want. They don't want to think. They just want to see the flash. They just want to see the easy answer. That it's much more complex. Same with with Peyton. His situation in New Orleans was much more complex than just him waving a magic wand around. But people don't want to talk about that. No, no, because coaches and quarterbacks. Next, it'll be coordinators. I mean, the list goes, it's a quarterback-driven league is what it was last year. Now this year, it's on a quarterback and head coach-driven league. Next year, it's going to be, oh, well, it's a quarterback-driven, head coach-driven, offensive coordinator-driven league. And then, oh, it's a defense. Yeah, so, I mean. Yeah, just, Rose, yeah, creating the narrative so they can make the next desperate move. Ezra's running for the hills, which is hilarious. Um He's taking, <clears throat> he wants to interview for defensive coordinator jobs elsewhere. He doesn't even want to be back in Denver as defensive I, coordinator. I, gee, gee, I wonder why. And I, don't, don't look, at, don't, 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 don't you look into that. Don't you dare look into that. I mean. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, Bucket Man, give us, uh, give us your two cents. Okay, well, I agree with everything you guys said. Number one, I don't believe anybody in their mother's in their mother's salt or whatever, doesn't know. Their mother's the, basement. Yeah, the mother's basement like we are today. They don't understand the true aspects of football. I, I, I just, I'm going to sit here and tell it like it is. I don't, I don't think people in today's society and also in today's NFL, there's a few people here and there, but in today's society, they don't know the true aspects of schematics and how uh, player personnel matters. They think that, like you guys said, grabbing a quarterback, <laughs> coach etc you know they don't understand the building process they don't understand the rebuilding process you have the Detroit Lions who clearly have an identity who are clearly better than the Denver Broncos are right now and when I have to hear all this bullshit narrative crap out there where they're saying oh Sean Payton ran a west coast system you know you guys don't understand the schematics of this whole thing he runs a multi-power run system with spread concepts i did a film review on that you can even go to the all 22 and they have film on this even you can go back to drew Brees playing oh, it well let me ask you this what again when they say oh they, he, he did a whole complete revamp for this quarterback that quarterback what's the what's the common thread between all those quarterbacks he supposedly reinvented the wheel what what is the one common thread Common thread is they have the same skill set. That's the common pocket quarterback. Common, common thread is that the, he fits. They fit his scheme. They fit the identity that he wants. You think, ladies and gentlemen, you then why did you bring in Sean Payton if you want to run a West Coast zone running scheme? And now you're going to put a you're going to put a head coach into a system that he is not familiar with, and he and he never ran it. And also, he did not come from the Bill Walsh tree. He came from the Bill Parcells tree. That's another lie that they're putting out there again if you want the truth you come to the mile high masterminds i mean we 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 get this 99 99 right so i don't want to hear anybody's bullshit on we we're going to run a west coast zone running scheme the sean payton schematics is a power gap system layered with spread concepts you need to have power gap guards you need to have powered 
offensive linemen. Okay, you you think that uh, you think that the Chiefs got to the Super Bowl because of Patrick Mahomes? You two were just basically talking about it. They had a rebuilding process throughout the whole entire operation. They had they had a system and an identity in place for going on I don't ten years a decade with Andy Reid there. Okay, they built the offensive line. They have a system. They put Patrick Mahomes in that system, let him develop under Alex Smith, learn from Alex Smith for a year, well, then they. Off, well, okay? that's what they had to do in New Orleans, too. They had to do exactly the same thing. Exactly. I'm just, again, I just don't think people people are into fantasy football. They're into this quarterback-obsessed bullshit. They don't understand the true aspects of rebuilding a team. They don't know the true aspects of what schematics are to help the strengths of players. And in terms of you have to put players in positions that ha- help them succeed, that fit a certain system. You know, you have... You know, guys like Javante Williams, as the bubble man talks about, he d- he fits the scheme in a way if you're going to run a lot of eye formation in the power run scheme. But like you said, you need more of your Alvin Kamara's. You need that one-two punch. You, you don't know. You never heard anybody talk about no, that. No, because they, oh, they don't. They don't know. They don't understand it. That that's the problem. They don't get it. They think that oh. We're bringing in Sean Payton, though. It's going to revolutionize the whole entire business, just like Russell Wilson, right? And we went five and we went five and eleven, five and twelve, whatever. I'm you waving mean, my magic wand around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so are we going to go through another fucking off season with Austin Warriors? You know, <laughs> yeah. Are we going to go through another off season for seven to eight years straight here, talking about how great this team is? Then we're going to get to the season. They're nowhere to be found. This team sucks with the player personnel. And then next off season, we're going to go get an offensive defense coordinator, like the Bubble Man says, and we're going to hype up it, hype it up again. And you're going to have the off season warriors. You're going to have Broncos Avenue, locked on Broncos, all these bullshit con artists that you know spew the bullshit. You know, you like to bring up stats. You have to have context with stats. Yeah, stats context. Of extreme of, of extreme importance. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. When you're talking about the Sean Payton system, the player personnel is exactly right. He ran a four-three system in New Orleans. He ran a multi-power run scheme with uh, spread concepts. He had better player personnel there, and people don't give credit to Jeff Ireland and Mickey Loomis for rebuilding the offense and defense alliance. Well, they don't give any credit to the ownership of the Kansas City Chiefs. The scouting department, the GM there oh, that, you know, that built on. all that that mountain that that Mahomes stands upon. Well, like they don't people here don't even give credit to Pat Bull, and that's how sad it is. I know exactly. Like, exactly. Great, point. On. Great, point. Of, Great point. Great point. They they, they blame know, Bullen the, for the succession plan he had with the trust. They're blaming Pat Bullen for putting LA and Ellis there. That that's the narrative, not thanking him for all those winning seasons, all the all the Super Bowl championships, all the Super Bowl appearances, um, more Super Bowl appearances and losing seasons, they're blaming him for the reason that the front office today is the way that it is. So, yeah, don't blame the trust. Whatever you do, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, that's exactly. from the trust themselves. Blame, but oh, it's Bolin's fault. He put us here. Well, yeah, 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 because they have never been held accountable, and Ever. they were. That's why they put the media machine there. Oh, it's weird. What do you mean weird? It's not weird. The the uh, uh, Elway's a, a PR guy. Always was a PR guy. He understands that. Okay. They, you know, what you do is you put this PR machine in front of the everybody saying that A plus move, A plus move. They when is one time that any of these platforms are going to hold them accountable like they hold the Rockies, like they hold the Nuggets, like they hold. Uh, the avalanche accountable at the front office. It's always an A-plus move. They're all monolithically saying the same thing. They dare not say anything to, to get that that check uh, cut. I guess they, they won't get their check. They won't get their uh, box office seat, their parking pass at the stadium. You know, no, it doesn't work that way with the Broncos. It only works that way with the Rockies, Avalanche, and, and uh, the Nuggets. But never, never say anything about the front office. That's what they did. So everything they do is an A plus move. Don't blame them. Can't be their fault. It's everybody else's fault, but theirs. Yeah, yeah. Like, how dare you blame the front office? How you know? Let's just blame the coaches and the players and who exactly. brought, brought in the players who brought in the coaches. The front exactly. office. It, exactly. It, 
this is the problem with a lot of people in today's society as well. They're so dumbed down because they watch those platforms. They don't have critical thinking skills. They can't think for themselves outside of a few people here and there. And then they, they just come up with these uh, false narratives. Oh, my God. Peyton is going to you know cater the system around Russell Wilson. Then why the fuck did you bring him in? You well, don't that, have all your- that, that They'll tell you that's why. Even though it doesn't in, in any way re- remotely uh, reflect his system, like the other quarterbacks that they had, they all reflected his system. They had it, and these were tweaks. These weren't total revamps, by the way. They were tweaks. That yeah, they don't get it. They they don't get schematics. They don't get film. You know, ladies and gentlemen, scouts watch film, coaches watch film, GMs, assistant GMs, they all watch film for a reason. I mean, they they watch it to critique themselves, to critique the players at the systems that they are in. And they get draft cat like the draft capital. They get players in the draft that help fit their scheme. You have there there's a perfect example out there of a guy like a Rashawn Slater. He fits what the uh, Chargers want to do. I wanted Rashawn Slater because he fit the zone running scheme. He, he's an agile offensive tackle. And he's a better technical sound tackle than our own, very own Garrett Holds, who is just an absolute disaster on the field. He sucks. And, and here's another thing. Why would we bring Mike Munchak back? He does not fit the power run scheme. No, no that's not. Own it's not, run it's not, not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Say, it's and, not going to happen. Bring in a three-four system. Yeah, you, yeah, no, it's what, it's. Tom Payton wants to run in four three. That that's that's what he wanted to run in the Saints. When we talked to the Saints insider, he likes to run a four-three system. So you're going to tell me that Draymond Jones is doing that Aaron Donald shit? Brock was out. <laughs> You got to be kidding me! You're, well, you're that, gonna... that, again, that's them selling the front office. When they start talking nonsense like that, you never hear that with the Rockies. You never again. You never hear it with the Avalanche, and you never hear it about it with the Nuggets. It's always A plus moves, A plus players. There's nothing wrong with these players at all. But you don't. They don't say that for the other. Only the Broncos, because they wouldn't get to interview the players and interview Benjamin Albright. Benjamin Albright and the players wouldn't dare to come on here because. We'd be telling them how it is, and they wouldn't like it. And that we also well, don't get. Paid by that's the, the point. That's the that's the takeaway. They need to know if Sean Payton's going to go in there and tell them, like we would tell them, you know, the front office, you got to liquidate these people. They're uh, they're not that good in the system, and they're they're taking up cap space. We got to start liquidating. And also, do you think that uh, Payton can talk uh, Russell Wilson into restructuring, or should he restructure his contract? What do you think about that? Restructuring his contract. The guy is the guy is 100% in it for himself. That's, I mean, players from the Seattle Seahawks, Richard Sherman himself is on the record of saying this stuff. He only cares about his image, how he's perceived by the public. Um, that's why he has his own office in Denver. For well, that, that's why he fits. That's why he fits with this front office so well. Because that's all this front office cares about is how their image is. That's why they're running out with their hair on fire, just making one bad decision signing and, and and splash move after another you know and and you could talk about oh we have all this hard work to do i mean nathaniel hackett and vance joseph and vic fangio and george payton in their intro press conferences said all this stuff that we that we've been talking about and then what happened to falls flat on their face every fucking time they're I, told no 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 i am sick and tired of this eight years of bullshit I, I just, oh, oh, oh man, I'm going to be waiting another, what, 10 to 12 months from now. Oh, my God, we got we to gotta, we gotta revolutionize offensive coordinator coming from the Dallas Cowboys or whoever, and he's going to come and revolutionize this offense, and, and then it just will fall flat on its face. It may even be from the Saints. Well, but from the Saints or whatever, and then it's going to fall flat on its face because you do not have the player personnel that fit what Sean Payton wants to do offensively. I mean, you basically brought in Sean Payton to basically hype up the fan base again, just like Russell Wilson. You brought him in so you could just, you know, give him the highest paid con- uh, head coach contract so he can have a retirement plan, like the Bubba Man says. I mean, it, this is just, this is an absolute clusterfuck. And this organization is is just in the wilderness, not knowing what the fuck it's doing. I want to go head to head here. Sean Payton 
and Harbaugh head to head here. Okay. Uh, the um, the Broncos media came out with uh, <clears throat> the short and the long uh, positives of, of Sean Payton. Uh, I think Harbaugh, you if you're comparing the two, you take a step down in X's and O O's on game day. I think you take a step down, but I think you get a step up when it comes to actually developing <laughs> the, the team, the identity, the core. And the reason I say that is because uh, with uh, Sean Payton, Sean Payton had, again, had to be told that, that to have a leash on him and, and that uh, you have to uh, stop getting the offensive toys. we got to start building from the ground. The builders were Ireland and Loomis, where I think, uh, I think um, Harbaugh can lead that charge for building. You know, it's almost like Harbaugh's kind of the John Ralston you know, kind of hire. Where he can bring in the uh, the Tombstone Jacksons, the uh, Tommy Jacksons, the Gratishars, he's a guy that can do all that. Where <clears throat> I don't think Peyton is the guy to bring in players. I think he needs that help. But when you get those players on the field, the ones that he needs, then he can really skip, skip up the game plan. I think that's the difference between those. What would have been the difference between those two hires? Well, again, you, you hit on something key, and I do not want you to forget that. You need to have somebody up there that has the same vision with Harbaugh. You know, you need an Adam Peters. You need an Ireland. You need a Mickey Loomis. You need guys like that. If Jim Harbaugh came here, I think he still would have had the same struggles that Peyton's going to have. I mean, because you yeah, don't have he would, need, he would need to have backing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you don't have an identity from the organization from the top down. That is what the great organizations have, like the Eagles, like the Bills, like the Chiefs. You know, teams like that, that are top tier teams in this league, they have an identity. They have a family culture. They know what they want in players. They get players that fit their system and then they roll with them and they develop them properly. The Denver Broncos don't have that. They they feed out the media machine, telling me how great Justin Simmons is. I do film reviews. They get taken down from them, too. And then he has to come out on Mile High Huddle and tell me how great his accolades are. Right. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, this this organization is nowhere close to the player personnel that you people <clears throat> have. And when you guys finally open your eyes and look at the film, then you'll understand what we're talking about. But continue to watch the highlight reels, continue to watch out, continue your fantasy football, and continue every offseason. Tell me how great this team is, and then come ten to twelve months from now, I will wait to hear from you again, and we'll continue we'll continue this all over again. So, Bubble Man, I want to. Me and uh, the Bucket Man were talking about talking about this, and I want to get your take on it. <clears throat> At the end of the day, this is where me and and the Bucket Man think that the mindset is at Denver. The mindset isn't to build a Kansas City Chief team. The but can't, the mindset isn't to do what the Eagles did at all. What the mindset here at uh, at the Dove Valley is right now. That is to make a, a when at the end of the day, it to be a Jeff Fisher run. That we have um, a coach that could maybe get the best out of these players at the, the sandbox. And maybe that equates at best a nine winning season. And it's if, if all the dominoes fall right. So they can sit there and say, hey, we're, we're just a, you know, we're just one season away. You'll see. But it's, you know, it's hypothetical again whether or not they'll achieve that. But I'm saying that they got a coach who probably can get more out of, of course, it depends on whether Wilson can, you know, get his head out of his ass, you know, uh, get it where, you know, whatever he can do with Wilson. I guess that's going to be a, a big part of this, but, uh, but just say best case scenario, because I don't think that some of these teams, the Broncos, a lot of these teams, the Broncos played, they're all that much better. So maybe he he gets, you know, seven, eight wins, you know, and it's like, yeah, you know, next season you'll see we're on the up. And to me, that's all they give a shit about. They don't it's not Pat Bowen who's into championships. They're playing the game like they're in it. But at the end of the day, I think all they really honestly care about is that it's like Jeff Fisher, you know, got nine wins. Look at this, man. Why, God, we're going to go to the next year. It's the Super Bowl, you know. They can they can blow that horn all they want, you know. Well, what's your take on that, that that thought? I think I think that they'd be happy to have nine wins, but I think it's just 
a bunch of yes men for Ellie and Ellis who don't know how to build a football team, who don't know how to, you know, win. They see the last year's Super Bowl champion. We're going to copy them. All right, let's do that. And then the next year they're like, okay, let's copy this team. Oh, oh next year, let's copy that team. But they're uh, really not copying them. They think they are. They do these on the surface stuff, but they're not, they're not really emulating them. Like with the Chiefs, the Broncos had a good thing with Scangarello. That guy brought out the best in Brandon Allen. He brought out the best in Cortland Sutton. He brought out the best in uh, Drew Locke. Yeah. Noah Fan. All those receivers, he brought out the best in all of them. And then they fire them next year trying to copy the Chiefs offense. They wanted he, to copy, yes. Yes, uh, absolutely. Sells absolutely. copy that offense from that year because they lost Tyree Kill. So now they're playing more of a take what the defense gives you. So they're adapting with the talent that they have. Something the Broncos wouldn't, wouldn't know about. I mean, Cortland Sutton, slow, doesn't get open, never gets separation. If he finally does, drops the ball. Um, K.J. Hamler's the only one on the team who can get separation, but he's injured all the time. Uh, Jerry Judy showed some things at the end of, at the end in two games of, out of three years of not doing anything. So, in my opinion, yeah, you play a Kansas City team who didn't play, of course you'll look good. You're slip, you got corners slipping on the field uh, uh, last game of the year, of course you're going to look good. How about you do that in games that matter? How about you do that in games where the team is trying, where teams have something to play for? Because I don't see it. I've seen three years of nothing from Jerry Judy, three years of drop passes, off-the-field issues, drama off the field on social media, and nothing on the football field. But Broncos Avenue says he's the best receiver in the NFL. Yeah, okay. I mean, show me the film because C.D. Lamb is better. Not even in the same discussion. Uh, Justin Jefferson's not even close to being in the same discussion. Do you know that uh, Bucketman? That's the guy he wanted us to get. If we, if they were, he didn't want to get. He wanted to. Because I watch film. I watch the all twenty-two, and we, we we're, we're we do it too. We watch the all twenty-two, and I just want to respond to Bubble Man here. Again, the Kansas City have been Kansas City's been running the same offense for years. So when you get players that can adapt to that system, then it's going to look like it has been. I mean, my God. I mean, they went out and got the offensive lineman. Or I've brought this up so many times. Orlando Brown, Joe Thune, Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, right tackle, Andrew Wiley. It took they, one season. Yep. They have guys. They have guys that they paid and d- developed before they gave Mahomes the half a billion dollar contract. That was just absurd. I would never pay a quarterback half a billion dollars. That is me. But the – but this is why this is why my draft picks get removed from them too. That's why my channels get removed because they fear my work. They do not like my work. And then and then you'll have these people come up and start their you know trolling bullshit. But again, when you <clears throat> film and you cr- and and you look at the schematics and you look at the feet work, you look at the technique work, you look at everything, then you can base an opinion off of it, and then. That's what scouts do. They base that, and then they want, is this guy going to fit a 4-3 system? Is this guy going to fit a 3-tech and a 3-4 system? Is this guy going to be a good off-ball linebacker in a 4-3? Is this guy going to be a good you know, zone runner in a zone running scheme? That's how these scouts and coaches base their opinion when they're scouting players. And at the end of the day, the Denver Broncos don't know how to do that. They think they do, but no, they don't. No, no. no. LA and the scouts, I mean, there is no scouts. They have, they have people at positions who don't get to do their jobs. So I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Because the, the, the mindset is quick fixes, band-aids, it used to be easy yesterday. That they have scouts. Broncos just came out today, and they said that the reason they won the Super Bowl 50 is because of the free agents they brought in. I was like, I commented, I'm like, oh, really? It wasn't drafting Malik Jackson. It wasn't drafting Derek Wolf. Who drafted Danny Trevay. Bradley Roby, Kayvon Webster. It wasn't well, all the take take Malik Jackson and Derek Wolf out of the picture, and you probably don't even go to the Super Bowl that year. No, it, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yes. And then take Wade Phillips out of that. You don't even yeah. you're not gonna get those guys to come in. But it was all the free agents, though. I mean, the free agent you build through the draft and you supplement through free agency. That's the way it's always been. You George supplemented supplement that way. George Payton himself said that when uh, that quote that I got came from George Payton when he was first hired and the Broncos have not done any of that. So that's yeah. how I know George Payton isn't doing his job because his philosophies go against what's actually happening. And if you look at the Vikings and the Broncos, two totally different builds. Well, two- the, last, the last draft, the people that are in the NFL, NFL insiders in the draft, 
they were talking about all these different teams and stuff. When they got to the Broncos, they said, well, you got a GM. He wants to go this route. He wants to get these players, but he's getting tapped by John Elway. No, 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 no. The outside consultant, you can't do that. You get our, this guy. And, and and you go and you go and look at the Broncos YouTube and those Aussies and hype videos that they do during the draft. Where's John Elway? <clears throat> He's in the draft room. He's in the draft room. He makes the phone call. Yeah. You can't He's make it up. The phone call. You, somehow you're some sort of a conspiracy theory when you actually see this on film. Listen to people that are in the draft itself talking about this. You but, listen to people in Dallas who said that George Payton wanted to bring in Dan Quinn to bring in the player personnel on the defensive side that he wanted to bring in. And who tapped George Payton on the shoulder and said, no, 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 no. I want to go to get Nathaniel Hackett so I can bring in or entice Rodgers to come here. Rodgers said no. They panicked and gave up everything. And the Seahawks fleeced the Denver Broncos like the Saints just did. And, they, and the, the rest is history. Yeah, that's what the outside consultant gave you. You paid an outside consultant, a la Elway, to give you that. I mean, yeah. thank I you. Walking into the biggest office in the building. What's up, boss? Yeah. Yeah. What, what more? Yeah. Yeah. He has no, he's not there. On his, on his scooter, dropping the, the NFL schedule. Yeah, I have a feeling that's all. There's going to be some of this. I mean, if then, you know, maybe. I don't know. Maybe Peyton is like, what What do you want me to do? Is this, this guy, guy do? Like a control freak. This guy, Penner, looks like a control freak. I think him and L.A. are going to butt heads 1,000%. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think they already have. I think they already have been butting heads in my of personal course. because Penner wants it his way, LA wants it his way, and LA is going to find himself out of here because he's not. That's the problem. They cannot leave the ego. That, that's what Pat Bowen was so good at. He left his ego at the door, and, and, and the rest is history. The, the, these people are egomaniacs. They can't leave their ego at the door. They can't build a foundational mindset on what they want to be as an organization and where they want to go. They're, They're just going. talking. Here, talking head here, talking head here, and that's why I'm not sold on this ownership because well, I, there's I so think, many heads. I think uh, Condoleezza Rice got thrown in that too with that head butting as well. I think that came out I, as well. I think she was the one that was pushing the David Shaw bullshit, and I knew David Shaw wasn't coming here. Well, yeah, that that you know that's going to be trumped. But she knew David Shaw, and she's like, oh, let's go get him. Well, that was, yeah, that was her pick, but she's going to get trumped by these other talking heads. That's what's going on here. Yep. The class. There's several owners who have a stake in this instead of one owner. And that's well, going to. This is extremely important. Again, this goes back to the Saints. This is all Saint related. So we got the insider over at the Saints, and that's what you had multiple owners before Sean Payton came. And everybody was the same exact thing. Everybody had a, an idea of what they wanted to do. And there was nobody on a single sheet of music. And then the owner bought out the other two and said, look, to Loomis, you're going to be the guy. Everything is going to start from you and trickle down. Then they get Sean Payton and the rest is history. But that's and then they let Sean Payton kind of run things. And then it's like, OK, we got to put a leash on you. We got to get even more centric. And, and have a foundation for Breeze to be able to succeed. Your offensive players that you keep bringing in for them to succeed. We got to work on the defense. The, de the defense was suffering at that time. So they really had to start revamping the defense. So, you know, I, I think it's going to be a long process. And like you said, I'll be dead. You guys will be in the nursing home by the time, <laughs> you know, the Broncos are in the real sense of the word are relevant again. I, I just have that feeling. Yep, they're going to be the next Cleveland Browns, uh, Detroit Lions. Not the Detroit Lions of today, the Detroit Lions of like five years ago. That's where the Broncos are, and I think it's even worse. I think they're worse now. Yeah, yep, I do. Yep, that, yep. I think they're already there. And my question really is uh, with Peyton is, are you really just here for the money and telling the front office, yeah, you just tell me what you want. I'll do whatever you want me to do. We'll, you know, fine, whatever. Or is does he really uh, truly – want to say no your guys aren't doing this right you know is there going to be honest headbutting go that's to me that needs to happen i'm not saying that's and, a, and that I, a good going on i think that was going on with fangio and elway to begin with too and look what I, happened it, with, you got I mean, to a cravens uh vic fangio was a jerk to the players i know he held you guys accountable he didn't put you at safety he wanted that, you at line because that's why, brought, that's why they brought nathaniel hackett in 
Because yeah, but the players they remember they were going to coach themselves. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep, they, they, you're yep. right. They they are so upset with the Fangio point. because he's holding them accountable. So we got rid of him. He's old. He doesn't know what he's doing. The the players know better. They're young and uh, all this new energy and a blah blah blah. And the rest is history. Yeah. And then what do we do with OTAs? Oh crap. <laughs> That, that's why that's why I just can't wait till Sean Payton sees this team up close and personal. OTA. <laughs> wow. He doesn't care. He's making his $20 million. That's, that's what I'm wondering. Is this, I don't care. Yeah, that's what you want. That's hey. well, again, I think I think they're gonna have to have to bribe assistant coaches to come here. Because I don't yeah. think anyone's gonna come here. They're going to have to overpay free agents. They're going to have to overpay coordinators. They're going to have to overpay everything to come here. When they fire George Payton, who they made fall on the sword. And, and that's why I don't defend George Payton himself, because if I was George Payton, I'm coming out because it's my resume, it's my job, and my reputation on the line. I'm saying, no, I wanted to bring in Dan Quinn. I didn't want to get rid of these draft picks because I wanted to start over and rebuild, which was my philosophy coming in, which is what I said when I was introduced to the team as the new GM. And I wasn't allowed to do my job. I didn't have say on whether we hired uh, Sean Payton. I didn't have say whether we brought in Russell Wilson. I didn't have say on what we gave away for Russell Wilson. That came from upstairs above me, tapped on the shoulder. Even before the ownership. The heat for all of it. So I don't feel bad for him because he chose to take the fall for it. And at the end of the day, he'll be the one who represents the Russell Wilson trade and now the Sean Payton trade. So that he's going to represent all of that. Um, even though Penner himself said that George Payton doesn't have say, he's just there for input. He'll still take the heat for it. They'll well, fire him. You know how George? You know how Penner said that by getting on the plane and going to to Michigan. Yep, <laughs> that's how he said it. He said it through his actions. Yeah, Penner is the new LA, in my opinion. He's going to be the GM. He's going to be the head coach. He's going to be everything. That's what. I, that's how I see it playing. And uh, this Penner guy, I don't have a good about him. I, buddy, I war- I warned it. I warned everybody. That I, again, here we go again. Here we go again. Well, that's what the actual owners having him do is be the GM. I mean, let's face hey, yeah, it. Yeah, where's Rob Walton? He's out of touch. He's as out of touch as his. Oh, is he at Walmart? You know, is he at the Walmart right now? You know, trying to you know overprice everything. Is that is that what he's doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> the Walmart market. Mark. Sean Mark. Yeah, Sean Mark. Is that going to be? It's what it's called next. Yeah, Sean Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the Broncos tax. He's got to pass on the Broncos tax. To <laughs> again, they're interviewing <laughs> Brian. Chris. <laughs> He's like, these coaches ain't going to pay themselves to mark up everything at Walmart. Yeah, I think him and the quarterback have a lot in common. Both both of them are out of touch, you know, completely out of touch. Oh, there there he is on the field. Oh, there he is up in the booth. Okay, yeah. Good deal. All Russell Wilson cares about is offices, front uh, parking spaces, subway commercials, and PR hype. That's all he cares about. So, yeah. I mean. Well, did, didn't uh, Peyton look like a guy who just won the, the – uh, the Powerball? I got no, I did. He looked all happy and ecstatic to be in Denver. He's like, this is the job I wanted. I didn't want the Dallas job. Yeah. My God, everybody was I flocking. Want- everybody was flocking to Denver. I mean, my God, just like these free agents last year were going to flock to Denver. Oh, my God. I had to flock here, too. Yeah, I, I didn't, didn't want to be anywhere years. they weren't going to pay me. I, w- I didn't want to be any- anywhere they weren't going to pay me. I well, wanted to go to Michigan and get on their hands and knees to get Harbaugh. And he well, said, that, and the other guy that went to the Texans, they were begging him this, the very day. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it was an easy decision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you, uh, you better hope you get Sean Payton. To get- then it was like, okay, we'll give you everything you want. Yep. So we don't have a first round pick till next year, ladies and gentlemen. And, and who knows if we'll even have that one. Exactly. And, and, and again, yeah. exactly. and again, it, it, in these people, oh my God, we can draft anybody. Well, you got to draft the right players. I mean, Although my God, but... Bruno doesn't even fit a three-four scheme, and he looked like shit. You move Baron Browning outside, he just oh, get anybody. Oh, yeah, yeah, Baron, Baron, Baron Browning. That he's doing that Von Miller shit. He doesn't even <laughs> fit as an outside linebacker. He's a middle linebacker. You morons. <sighs> Uh, Draymond Jones doing Aaron Donald stuff. The only difference between Aaron uh, Draymond Jones. How about Bronco? First name. 
I want to say this to the bubble man. That when you hear these morons talking about all this garbage, it really is the it's the front office. That's right. the front office talking. They, they believe this shit. <laughs> and again, this is why I'm wondering if you're really going to get a coach with uh, Sean Payton saying, "No, you guys are out of your mind. This is the way it's got to be." And then you get the proper the proper headbutting going on. Or is it like, yeah, sure, Draymond Jones, whatever you guys say. You well, know. you're talking about bringing in whoever. I mean, look at look at George, George Payton's a perfect example. If they wanted to blow up this thing, they would have fired George Payton. They would have blew it all up. Instead, That's what I think. That's they, what I think. Yeah. It doesn't matter who we bring in. I still believe they're going to be handcuffed, just like previous coaching staffs. They're going to bring in players. Oh, like you said, work in that sandbox. You're going to work with what you got, deal with it. May have us win nine wins, and the next off season, ten to twelve months from now, we'll have the off season warriors and everybody else come out and say, "Yeah, next oh, season, Super we're, Bowl. we're doing this away." Yeah. Oh yeah. Let me let me let me run this by it before I forget. If I didn't already forget, I want to ask you guys: Do you think the conversation was behind closed door with Penner and Sean Payton? Is look, here's your sandbox. Don't you know rock the boat? You make this this right here work. I don't want to hear about, you know, I don't want to hear about big changes. You make what works right here. Do you, you think that is what he was told when coming in? I think that's exactly what he was told. That's why he didn't look ecstatic to be here. He didn't look excited to be here. He knew. He was like, I'm taking the money. Uh, I'm getting paid. That's what he always wanted at the end of his career was money. He got the money. Yep. And, uh, He's just gonna let the Broncos do what they want to do, and he'll he'll take a hit on his legacy. But he's on his way out, retiring. He's already coached and won a Super Bowl, so he doesn't have anything left to prove. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, you want me to say this? You want me to do that? Fine. That's that's what you're paying me. I, 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 there. To me, to me, it's a two part. I think number one, what you saw in New Orleans, I think, is a direct correlation to. Basically, what Sean Payton was New Orleans. I, I think what made him successful and what made his, you know, his rise so unique is because he had Jeff Ireland, he had Mickey Loomis in that organization that got him the players that fit his scheme, that got him the offensive line, that get you know the, the rest is history. Now he comes to Denver, and I agree with Bubble Man. I think it's more of a retirement plan than anything. I think that to me, it's just going to be more of a it's going to be like, it's going to be a mirror image of what you really see. I think it's just going to be fake. I think it's going to be all, you know, hype, 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 you know, just tell the fans how great this team is every, you know, how long he, how long he's going to be here. I think him and Russell Wilson are tied hip to hip. Um, I think that's the whole crux of this whole thing. And in, in, again, Sean Payton wasn't the number one choice for Denver. It was Harbaugh. So again, th- again, that wasn't the clear number one choice, obviously, because reports have come out. It was Harbaugh all along. They said no. They panicked, and then they're like, "Okay, we'll give you everything, New Orleans." <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like oh, no, George Payton. <laughs> uh, oh, you just can't make it up, man. You could have paid a coach a fraction of what you're paying and still had your first round pick to find someone who fits what Russell Wilson does, but you overpay for someone who doesn't fit what Russell well, Wilson does. Well, I. Don't- just going that. out and getting Russell Wilson, I'm still, I can't, I never understood that. Well, they know you know, sense. I think is a vastly overrated quarterback. He doesn't see the field very well. You have to have plays that are designed for players to get open. And, our, and like you said, Bubble Man, our receivers can't get open to save their life. And again, you had you had a system that I believed in. You had Fangio as the head coach. You had Skangarillo. You had Mike Munchak. I believe Skangarillo and Munchak were working hand-in-hand tandem in tandem. And you saw the offensive line look better. Dalton Reisner hasn't looked the same since Mike Munchak and Skangarillo have left. You saw the progression when you had a Drew Locke back there. That was a more mobile quarterback that got him out on the move, got those bootleg passes. You could have done this the right way. But instead, like you said, Bubba Man and, you know, Chop Liver, you know, Pat Shermer all the way, 20 plus yards. I mean, the rest is history. This team does not know how to build a successful NFL team, and they do, and they're not they're not in a dynasty building anymore. That that went that went out the door, and Pat Bowen left. That's gone yeah. now. Yeah, Sean, you just do what we say. You make this whatever's in this. You could get do anything you need with the, but just work within this sandbox. All right, all right. <laughs>
in the interview, he's probably like, all right, Justin Simmons, Draymond Jones, they have to go. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm like, you want this $20 million? You're going to have to work with what you got. So Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. At some point, yeah, I could see that. That's that's the whole thing. And maybe that's where Harbaugh's like, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not here to be your puppet. <laughs> yeah, he Harbaugh's probably, really he probably, funny. He probably said, it's, I mean, it's not about money. I, I need to have control. I need to have say. I need to tell you what you're doing right and wrong. Uh, uh, well, clearly, he has that in Michigan. They're a top five team in the country right now because of the offense and defensive line play. And they have offensive linemen coming in this year's draft that I'm high on, but the Broncos won't get them because they're not interested in offensive defensive linemen. They're in the corners. They're in the edges. They're in, it would not shock me one bit if they get a receiver or tight end in this draft because that's what they're or in. an edge rusher, an edge rusher. Yeah, I, I got an edge rusher. Yeah, well, because the Browning worked out so well for them. Yeah, yeah n- n- Browning and Kenny Young and them, like, they had something with that under Fangio, and of course, instead of giving the money to Kenny Young, let's give it to you know, let's go pay Randy Gregory. Pay <laughs> Randy Gregory to play in a three-four. <laughs> and he's not a well, free outside line off the field. History, uh, injured all year. Finally, notice him when he's punching people in the face. Well, I, I know. I think that's why Edgerow wanted out of here too. Let me ask you this question, guys. Did the did the Dallas Cowboys miss Randy Gregory at all this year? They look better without him. Oh, okay. Yeah, they were better without him. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. Andrew knew what was going on with the Broncos defense. He saw offenses stopping themselves, and he knows that it's only a matter of time before the whole house of cards comes crashing down. That's why he didn't take the interim head coaching job to begin with. No, 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 no. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this, Cincinnati, did you see Mahomes throwing the ball right at their interior linebackers? Did you see Mahomes throwing the ball right at their free safety in the corner of the end zone? Did you see their defense just letting uh, Joe Burrow do whatever he wants against them on the ground and through the air? No. I didn't see blown coverages and all this stuff against oh, the yeah. Bengals. Yeah. That, that, and – that 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 right there's proof, and these fans are like, no, the Broncos are just right there from beating the Chiefs. I'm like, you're not even right there to getting a hundred percent. Let me ask, let me ask you this: Did they in any way even play the same? I mean, motivational wise, I mean, it looked to me like when the Broncos play the Chiefs, the Chiefs are just simply going through the motions, and that's not what you saw when they were playing uh, the Cincinnati Bengals. You saw them scrapping, I mean, just scrapping away and. They were going full on, full board, and you you just definitely didn't. I didn't see that with it, not just the Chiefs. I didn't see that with most teams that the Broncos played. When the Ravens played the Bengals in the playoffs, was that the same performance they gave the Broncos? No. No. And yeah, was Chris Jones single-handedly destroying the Broncos' offensive line in the same way that he did against the Bengals? No. Yeah. No, it's took- like. Time. Like, okay, I got to actually do something now. Yep. And I think Mahomes is just throwing interceptions just to keep them in the game. Maybe they got the call from the NFL, like, hey, don't, don't blow them out too bad. We want our ratings up, so let them back well, in. Well, Russell Wilson, we, get, we, we like Russell Wilson, so yep. he's, he's, he needs help. And because he laughs, he throws that interception, just, he just he looks at his, I don't know, his Kelsey. He looked at somebody, and they, they just laughed. Yeah, because he... He knew what he yeah, did. They laughed. I, mean, I said, to, I said to you, I said, did you see, did you see that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> he looks at his, his teammate. And they laughed. Oh my God, dude! This is why the NFL is such a uh, like any NFL fans. I'm not. I'm not big on the NFL anymore. I'm not. I'm more into college and high school now. I mean, my God, it, NFL is such a poor product right now. Hey, I mean, we know it's fake. Just don't say it, okay? Yeah, exactly. A WWE, WWE. <laughs> The holding calls, the miss, you know, the fifth down that the Chiefs got. Oh, yeah, yeah, and everybody sees it. It's not like they're, you know, you're cr- oh, you're crazy because you saw it. No, I'm not crazy. It happened, and that's what they're doing. It's just call a spade a spade. How many times are we going to have Garrett Bowles clotheslining people? I mean, I have video of other people from other teams showing this, and they're not calling it. Like this is the NFL is just it's a it's such a bad product. Well, that's why I say this whole Walter Payton Award thing is just a joke. I mean, yeah. Tell me how great you are, Justin Simmons, on Mile High Huddle, off the field. 
uh, Kareem Jackson has to do a full-on sprint from the other side of the field to make sure you don't give up a touchdown. I yeah. saw that, the field. that was such a great – that was great to just show that. I mean, just great grab on that one. And that's just all the time with that guy. Yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't gotten taken down yet. That was just – that was, like, within the first, like, 10 minutes of looking at the defense in well, one – Well, the offensive coordinators all target him, his area. They they go – you'll see the majority of passes are thrown right in his area all the time. That is oh. not – that's not a safety that that's top anything. Of course, of course, that walk off touchdown, that was on Justin Simmons' side of the field. Where was he at? Who got the blame, though? Patrick Sertain got blamed. Yeah. In a receiver yeah. friendly, you should have your safety help. The, and you know who the privileged players are because they don't get the blame. And guys like you, Sertain, and all those te- like the teams. Yeah. I could see Sertain going somewhere else, too, when it's. Oh, time. yeah. Oh, if yeah. I were the I'd be trading Sertain because you can get value out of him and actually start a rebuild around a player like him because he could go to a team like Kansas City, like Cincinnati, and help them win now, and you can get a first-round pick out of him. But they're going to keep him. Well, do you think that there's uh, teams out there stupid enough to take Justin Simmons by the top five hype? Uh, I don't see him starting on most teams. He shouldn't even be the starter on this team. Caden starting. You don't think any team is is hoodwinked enough to to think that? Yeah, I, I'm not sure I would even buy that either. They know that I think they know the deal. He's not invited to the Pro Bowl by his peers, so that tells me a lot right there. But he's second team All Pro though, paid for. You know, he's like, yeah, I'm second team All Pro. Who cares? Yeah, think- the, yeah. Sports writers, anonymous coaches, anonymous players. Yeah, right. But your peers didn't see it that way. Yep, exactly. And it's uh, unfortunate that they extended that guy. When they extended him, I was so pissed. I was pissed when I saw that they extended Corbin Sutton and Tim Patrick. And I was <clears throat> very pissed off about the Randy Gregory signing. And I'm like, this, is, this isn't this is what I'm used to seeing. Like, I started watching football in 2007. With the first Super Bowl I saw was the Giants and the Patriots that year. And then <clears throat> my family's been a Bronco fan. And, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Even when they were bad with Mike Shanahan, they were still right there to actually getting in. They just shot themselves in the foot. The Broncos couldn't stay out of their own way at the end of the year every single time. You know, I was 6 0 collapse. I was there for the Josh McDaniels collapse in 2010. I was there for, you know, the Tebow garbage in 2011 with LA trying to shove Tebow out of the door. Um, I was there and with the, yeah, so I mean, that, that's when I started. So I started right at the end of Mike Shanahan. So I go back a little bit further. <laughs> yeah, I was like nine. Yeah. I go back to 2015, according to these morons. But, yeah, I started uh, when I started. Uh, during the playoffs. Oh, yeah, during the playoffs. And I, I can't say barrel man, I'm bucket man. Yeah, you're bucket man now. <laughs> yeah. ah. that, that over here has been the one thing you can. Oh, yeah. That guy, man, he's too much. Can't even can't even say the things I want to say about him because this is YouTube and yeah. yeah. yeah them them tube. Them yeah. tube. That's why I'm off at you. Well, I'll say one thing about us. We're not reading scripts. I mean, again, I'm gonna say it those outfits that you're talking about, I mean, they're so obviously it's so bad. I mean, it's bad script reading. They're not just reading scripts, they're doing it very poorly. Does it yes. look like the place right behind them? What's that? That guy has the Justin Simmons poster right behind him. Like, it's oh, that, it had, that had to be there. That yeah. absolutely had to be there. Of every player on the team to make a poster out of Justin Simmons. Oh, here he goes with his John Elway poster. <laughs> tell, us how, tell us how great he is. Chop liver. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, yeah. It's top five. I had, a, I had to smell the buttermilk. Oh, uh, yeah, this <laughs> yeah, buttermilk. It's, it's buttermilk. I mean, does it look like we're in a place that has a green screen and, you know, reading scripts? I'm in my mother's basement, for Christ's sake. Your mother's basement, yeah. We're all in our mother's basement. Yeah, I'm, 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 he's he's locked up in his chopped liver dungeon. You know, yeah. he's, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a, just a big old clusterfuck. Like the Broncos. Yeah, I like the Broncos. I wish Hard Knocks would go. I wish they would get on Hard Knocks just to see, just to get like some idea of what's actually happening over there, but they won't allow it. Well, they believe it would be heavily edited. Yeah, it would, it would yeah. be heavily so, edited. 
LeBron's like, you better not show that. Better better cut that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. John, John, Elway, he'll be here. He'll be watching the final cut. He'll mm-hmm. let you know what can be seen and not seen. Yeah, yeah. Well, you look- did you know that Elway hired what's his face um, Clayton to brief the players all on uh, you know how to deal with mate media. So then John Clayton, before he died, was writing all these puff pieces on you know on the Broncos. I thought that was. They had the great offensive line in the AFC West. How they had the. <laughs> It's so fine. Over the Chiefs, I know. I know. I know. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I just I just keep track of the Mile High Huddle and all these things. I just go on social media, see the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Go on YouTube, you know, after after work, watch some, some hear some of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life just being said on these. T- <laughs> like, oh, my God. Jerry Judy's the best receiver in the NFL. I have the stats to prove it. The sad oh, thing is, is because oh. media machine, there's people in, the, uh, in nationally that think all this BS. It's like, well, if they're so great, where are, why don't they show up during game time? Yeah, well, why, why they they call call if they had all this great player personnel, why did they go five and twelve and one and six in the division? Yeah. Oh, heck, 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 heck. oh, I forgot. We got to blame a head coach now yeah. again. Yeah. again. It's always, it's, yeah, it's always blame somebody else. Never the front office, though. Oh no, no, don't say anything. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's the next guy to get the axe. And then it'll be Peyton's turn. And then it'll be uh, Sean Payton. It's all his fault. Sean, Sean Payton's down. Or not Sean, Sean Payton. I'm sorry. George Payton. Uh, George, George Payton will be gone yeah. after your one state. Have their, he'll be gone. Um, yeah. Yeah. With Along with probably a, a, a offense defensive coordinator. Yeah. And, and, yeah. We're a GM away, we're an offensive coordinator away. The next year's the year, man. Every every year, once week thirteen rolls around, you have them saying, "Next year, we're going to be back in it." The match, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could because they played so well at the end of the year. I mean, in Madden twenty three, I just went seventeen to zero with this Broncos team. I mean, my God, I'm um, like, and this was on all Madden level. I went, <laughs> I went. Well, of, course, of course, you went seventeen to zero. It's the off season. I know. <laughs> the off season, yes. The Broncos always go 17 0 on the off. Wilson threw, man, Russell Wilson threw for 5,000 yards, 55 touchdowns, and only two picks. I mean, my God, he well, looked like a fucking legend. Well, tell me this how many Super Bowls did the Broncos win in the off season? They, they're on number eight, right? No, eight, 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 eight consecutive off season Super Bowls. I mean, my God, I was looking at, I, was, I went back and looked at the Nick Burrito draft grade. They were giving it an A plus. That's of course it's an A plus. They they never <laughs> they never ever challenge the front office. Never will they do that. But we're some sort of weird conspiracy nuts thinking that they're taking their top in our basement and yeah. mother's basement and our mother's basement. Yeah, but but they say the same thing when it's the Rockies. They say the same thing when it's the Nuggets. They 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 hold them account, but they can never hold the Broncos front office accountable. That isn't that strange. <laughs> You got the the Nuggets and the Avalanche are actually they they player developed and you know built their team through the draft and smart moves. I mean, the Broncos are just oh my god, you know. And because free- of that, they're 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 at the top of their fields. So I mean, the, the yeah, Nuggets, don't, don't look at that. Avalanche just won a championship. So I mean, the Broncos have, the Broncos haven't even sniffed third place in the division for like for how many years. <laughs> On my channel, we had so many comments that, God, it's amazing they see you as more relevant than the Broncos. I don't want to be more relevant than the Broncos. I mean, that's a toxic cesspool over there to begin with. I'm good. It's probably, yeah, I don't know. But they have, like, four owners, five owners, you know, who all want different things. And that's that's going to, yeah, I don't know. And the outside consultant in there. there. The outside consultant. <laughs> that you got John Elway and Penner who are going to be going at it. Oh man, yep. Eventually, yeah. Oh, is wannabe CEO. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to go, but and Peyton just saying, "No, you guys figure it out. You guys, I'm just, you know, I'm just the XO guy here." Peyton is probably just trying to figure out how to get out of there. <laughs> Already, <laughs> he's like, "How am I going to get out of here without going down as the worst GM in NFL history?" Yes, yes. Ah, uh, buddy, you should have never signed it. You should have never signed it. Yeah, they they will definitely give him 
that distinction. I guess maybe he thinks Peyton's going to save him. The Just other like Hack, when the Jets signed him, the, the Jets were getting absolutely destroyed for signing Hackett. Yeah, and then find out that maybe the Broncos were the uh, the issue. Yeah, but, uh, just like Vance Joseph, right? And then he went to Arizona and had a really good defense and got the player personnel that he wanted and uh, just like yeah. all these other coordinators. Just yeah, like the, Card- uh, the Cardinals defense versus the Broncos defense. I mean, is there any difference in, any difference in the type of players they have? You know, uh, Buda Baker, J.J. Watt, all the in- faster interior. And Zayvon yeah. Call. Yeah. yeah. You're not allowed to have that. We're uh, Randy Gregory, okay? You're allowed to have Randy Gregory and Draymond Jones. Last, <laughs> yeah, I'd but, rather have Harris than Draymond Jones at this point. Like, yeah, well, we got a whole media machine telling you how wonderful he is. So what's wrong with Shelby Harris with the guaranteed money? We're still paying Juwan James. <laughs> yeah, like we, we 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 did target the offensive line. We got we got Garrett Bowles, Juwan James, Glasgow. Oh, yeah, I just had that on my comment. Yeah, we got Glasgow, and I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> he sucks. He He's sucks. fucking terrible. The Lions got rid of him. The Lions got rid of him to give Frank <laughs> Ragnall a big contract, you moron. Yeah, you cannot get a rag now. It's, it's, God. You cannot do that. <laughs> Not allowed to have that. God, these people are stupid. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see who they hire at a uh, offensive and defensive coordinator. They'll probably be in uh, Brian Flores of this four three defense. So. I, you know, we were talking about that. That is weird that they reached out. That it's almost like a slap in that guy's face. You know what I'm saying? I don't exactly. know. He's, he's, suing he's suing the trust right yeah. now. Well, that and that's just it. And it's like, oh, yeah. Can we bribe you too? Come on, you can just drop that. You can just drop that. <laughs> that's exactly. <laughs> On. Even though Elway still in the idiot you know, got an office there, just don't don't worry. Well, well, we're we're putting it out there for you. Even, wow. Even the Dolphins have their shit together right now. I mean, it's just oh man. You got oh my god. Well, I think they have a quarterback upgrade for starters with you know Tua versus uh, Russell. My, yeah, I'm in my head. Wilson. Tua is what Russell Wilson dreams to be. Like, he's yeah. the best. Of Russell Wilson, and oh, yeah. the stats say this. The stats say this, right? Broncos Avenue. My God, he can't even sniff Russell Wilson. Okay, He's all right, really- tell us that, buddy. Yeah, Broncos. it was never Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson was never an issue. It was always Hackett. Never, never was a Russell yeah. Wilson. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that's why they had to be. That's why they popped up. That's why these pop ups came up. All of them saying the same thing. It wasn't Russell Wilson. That's when I know you're being financed by the front office. It's all different. He never had was Taysom Hill, and he never even became the long-term starter. He's every position but quarterback at this point. So, I mean, I don't know. I I, I don't get it. I don't know when these people will get it, but I've never seen such a PR, such censorship coming from something that's not from criticizing a government from another country. It's like it's you would think you're criticizing a government when you criticize the Broncos. They actively get your videos taken down. They flag your videos yeah. of copyright claims, the whole thing. So I don't see any other team or, uh, engaged in this. I see them engaged in trying to get better. Well, and that's what C. Salami was bragging about. Remember that uh, Slayer and I think uh, Schefter both came out saying that, you know, he's signing the dotted now. Right now, Aaron Rodgers, he's signing the dotted line. And they – they were everybody rightfully said, "Hey, you people are full of shit." And Cecil Lammy was shaming everybody for putting them in their place, rightfully so, saying that the Broncos have put together the best PR machine. Let's face it, and, and he was proud to talk about that. And that's when that came out. You know, when they got attacked, they see the front office does not like to get attacked because they do not want to be held accountable. That's the issue. Should, Bolin would have showed him all the door. I guarantee you. Had well, be happening under Bolin. Yeah, a healthy <laughs> extension would have never happened. Randy Gregory never happened. Well, John Bolin. only would have got the camp. Would have been shown the door. He said, "Look, John, we just can't do this anymore. Like this, this is you know." He showed because he showed Shanahan the door. Mm-hmm. There's nothing to say he wouldn't do that with Elway too. 
but yeah, they will, they do not want to be held accountable. And that gives me, brings us full circle back to Sean Payton. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be allowed to hold that front office accountable? I don't think so. No way. It's not. So basically, hey, I'm just here. You tell me what you want. I'll do the best I can. You don't like it? Pay me. You don't like it? Pay me. You know? That's what I guess I think that at the end of the day, maybe this the bad best, this turns into a, another uh, very expensive uh, Jeff Fisher era at best. Yeah, best case scenario is eight, nine, nine and eight every year. Yeah. 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 And people would be proud of that. That's the sad part. That's what they're all striving for now. So. Yeah, that would be proud to be nine and eight. Just happy to be there. Yeah, I'd rather be 14 with the number one pick in the draft than be nine and eight. So, yeah, could you imagine the shit that they're going to give us for going nine and eight? That's a Super Bowl to them. That's the that's the Super Bowl. I mean, it was the Super Bowl because beat the Jaguars. It was the Super Bowl because beat the Chargers. I mean, if you if you people strive to be mediocre and expect mediocrity, that's your problem. I expect championships. I expect dynasties. I I I suspect long term success. I don't I don't have mediocrity. I don't I don't strive to be mediocre. So well, I would take it you're probably fed up with the Broncos then. Yeah. Because they're none of that. They're none of that. They put up. They play a good game, but they're none of that. Yeah, Madden twenty three. It's a good game. It's a top the, five game. Broncos Avenue was like, oh, oh, uh, Josie Jules rated 80 over on Madden. So <laughs> no, but you, when you're sitting there clapping the front office for everything, don't oh. tell me the front office isn't, you're not a, a, a part of that. That media machine that Cecil Lammy spilled the beans on. Please tell me, don't tell me you're not a part of that, please. And then the fact is, you read scripts, and you do it poorly. And, and again, he, here, here's the issue. The, I think this is a much bigger issue because Matt Rule coaches my uh, Nebraska, okay? He came from the Carolina Panthers. He even said on uh, – it was with Taylor LeJuan and Will Compton. I sent it to this guy. I'll send it to you, Bubble Man, where he said that there were so many, like uh, – talking heads when he was with the Panthers and then he comes to Nebraska they have the same mindset from the chancellor all the way down to the you know the 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 the, the players they have the same vision on what they want to do that's what the Denver Broncos used to be that's what the Eagles are now that's what the Chiefs are now but the dysfunctional organizations have that's all these we are we have a single vision yeah we have a single vision of overpaying people and sucking the freight no, no, I mean all three of us that's what uh, we represent. We represent uh, that kind of mentality. No, we represent female tendencies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess and I guess the others represent that too because but that this is why that the front offices they hates it so much. Because they don't want to be what these real you know juggernaut teams are. They're they're pretenders. They they want to be pretenders. And they're happy with that. Happy to be there, nine and eight. Happy to be there, nine and eight. Let's three. It's the Super Bowl, nine and eight Super Bowl. Maybe they sneak in the wild card, get bounced out in the wild card round. They get blown yeah. out wild card round. Yeah. Even if they go past the wild card round, just get blown out by a a real That's team. Hard. Again, do you, they? I don't even see them sniffing the wild card because they don't have the player personnel. It all comes back to player personnel. Yeah, that's what we have to see this this off season. We have to see what Sean Payton is su supposedly doing. Is he just going to stay in the sandbox? Is he gonna Is he gonna shake uh, upset the apple cart and say, "Look, we got it. We got a lot of work to do here. Let's get it done." Are we going to have another off season where there's one good move, which is DJ Jones, and the rest of it's overpaying and bullshit? Like, I mean, that's I don't know. I don't know if they can overpay. Right now, they're so tightly. They'll find a way. They got that Walmart money. Well, no, well, no. I wanted to talk about that too. They that have up right now, so you can't have a LA Dodger. You can't have the LA Lakers. You can't have the New York Yankees. It's set up, so there, 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 there is a limit. You you can't buy you can't buy your way to championships in the game of football. You can't do that. You can't no. buy. 
championships. You can do that in the MLB and the NBA, but you cannot do that in the NFL. You actually have to roll up your sleeves, player develop, have a vision, have an identity, and now look at the Chiefs and the Eagles. They're in the Super Bowl, and the Eagles look like them. I think the Eagles are going to win it. They're going to. They're going to. They're just. They're the better fifty-three man roster than the Chiefs are, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. But the bottom line is both are contenders. Uh, the Broncos are pretenders. That's just the bottom line. Yep. Just and I don't see that. Go uh, ahead. Oh, you know, we're we're contenders. I was like, all right, wait till you lose your next four straight. When yeah. they play, they got their asses beat. They played Cleveland with Case Keenum and lost to Case Keenum. They were running the ball all over them. Lost four straight, just like I said they would. And then I was like, hey, I thought we were going to the playoffs. What happened? <laughs> Again, that Browns game, who are they running at? That Aaron Donald esque shit, Draymond Jones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't make it up, man. You just can't make this stuff up. Well, is there anything else, guys? I don't know. I think that's it. Yeah, I better. Uh, I got, I got, I got a, a lot to do. <laughs> yeah. Got to go back to your dungeon, chop liver. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go yeah. take care of that DARPA dog. Yeah. yeah. Get fed that pop tart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I gotta get back to my female tendencies, man. You know. Yeah, work on those female tendencies, will you? <laughs> I gotta get yeah, back. Well, to- at hey. least, at least you were vindicated. Uh, yeah, yeah, that wasn't a bribe. No, 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 no bribe money. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, you got Sean Payton. They said we wouldn't land him. It's that Walmart money, man. It's crazy. Just. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. <laughs> what? <that? laughs> oh man! Oh, that guy, man, too much. Yeah, they get too much is an understatement. All right. <laughs> All, All right. right. I'll see you. All right. <laughs> yeah, sidearm shoots. Shoots. Three oh three is how we get down here in Denver. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's like nails on a chalkboard. That guy. He's all. He's all. I, I do my dumbbell press, man. People approach me in the gym. They want to know what my life journey is like. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, my life journey. Please spare me. Uh, yeah. No one wants to hear about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let you go. All right. You guys have a good night. <laughs> yeah. I think we lost the the bucket, uh, bucket man. <laughs> All righty. Well, you have a good night. You too. Take care. You too. Thank you. Bye bye.